Okay, go ahead. <laughs> okay, so some resources to help you go through the design process. Chapter 10 for your room relationships and sizes. This is the first chapter I'd recommend you breeze through. Okay, now, what you want to do is you want to go through this, get familiar with stuff is, read the base information, don't spend a lot of time on it, but then when you go into 18 and you start drawing the master, go back to that section and read it in a little more detail. Okay? The next thing I would recommend you do is go to chapter 18. This is a chapter specifically for floor plan layout. The author runs you through a lot of criteria on how you develop an initial floor plan. So a great chapter for you. Once you get the walls set up that are done in this chapter, then you're going to go back to 16, which is your floor plan symbols. This is your windows, your doors, your walls. How do we express those on a drawing? Basically, we use symbology, symbols, to represent these actual items. And that chapter will show you the different symbols that we use. So those are three chapters that will aid you in what you're doing here. Now, when you start a project, it will start in the residential realm usually one of two ways. One is going to start from something like this, where the client has spent a significant amount of time online or old school, like these magazines you used to buy, that have floor plans and elevations in them. Okay, these are typically sold by some company, they're trying to make money off of it, but most people look at it and say, you know what, I like this look, and then they start looking at the floor plan and say, you know what, this floor plan has what I need, but I, it's got one too many bedrooms here, let's take that out. And they just hand you this and they say, this is the size, we want to knock four feet off, we want to move this room here, whatever, and then your job is to then modify it for their thing. This is really a pretty good way to start. Almost every project I've done, upwards of 80% of them start this way. Okay. Normally, I start it this way. I decided to go a little different this year because, I, like I said, I'm removing some of the stuff we're doing at the front out. So I'm going to make go a little more basic than this. The best of all worlds is if you get a client that walks in and hands you a two-scale drawing and a sketch. Man, that is like the cat's meow. You almost want to reach up and kiss the person and say, thank you, thank you, thank you for giving me this. Because now all those design problems are kind of gone, except for the nitpicky ones right at the end. Okay, and I have had that happen too. They could keep in mind, we have a large part of the population that has done construction at one time or another. They understand grid paper, they understand how to do this stuff, and that does happen too. Did you get any information like this? Yes. I mean, you got nope. some bubbles. No. Let's go to the packing that in your mailbox this morning. Yeah. Bubbles. Okay, so you started with this. Where my letter at? What is this? It's, it's, a it's quick an idea. Sketch. Okay. It's an idea. It's got a specific name. A yeah, brainstorm. Is it a bubble plan? It's a bubble plan. Bubble diagram. Bubble. Okay, this is the base. I think it's on chapter 16 or through 18, somewhere in there in your text. I would highly recommend, there's a couple good videos on this on YouTube. Just type in bubble diagrams and they'll pop up. They're five, ten minutes. Bubble diagrams can be taken to pretty big levels. And it is a great sketching tool. What it's meant for is to show room locations and interaction. Okay. So in essence, what we're saying here, this is the main floor plan. Okay, you're, this is a floor plan, okay. but it's shown in a bubble sense. So it's showing the location of where everything's going to happen. We're actually, actually going to come in, we're going to come up onto a deck that's covered. Here's your main entrance. We're going to come into the living room. The living room's going to be open all the way through the whole structure. It's going to tie into the dining room. The kitchen, notice the double arrows, this is going to be open also. Okay, that double arrows show access. I use just a, soft, a straight line to show where I want um, my views and where I want to take that. So I'm going to do a double door off of this side. This is going to be a window wall. Okay, it's going to be all windows because this is our view. Okay. Um, we've got our kitchen. We're going to do a U-shaped kitchen. That's what the client kind of wants. Um, we're going to have stairs to access the lower level coming right out of the front room. We've got a hall that comes down 
access is the utility room, guest bath, the bath, and the master suite. For the garage, we're going to come and access through the utility room, which we might call a mud room. Going to kind of do, do double duty. You're given some overall dimensions. We're 56 feet from here to here. We're 48 feet from here to here. The garage is going to be 24 by 24. So it's going to be a basic two-car garage. From this, you're generating something like this. So you start by doing, I'm just showing you this, and we're going to come back and look at this. I'll start with big rectangles. And that's, in essence, the best way to start. Because you've got your overall dimensions. Remember, cost is based on square footage. Okay. So I want you to keep those outside dimensions that I gave you on the bubble diagram. I want you to keep those solid. What happens interior to that is going to be up to you. Okay. As long as we kind of understand that the client gave you this bubble diagram for a reason, set up this way. So now is when you're starting to try and get into the thought pattern of your client. Okay. So this is, this is the end result. By the way, this is how this house was actually built. Okay. It was built just like this, based off of that bubble diagram. Okay. So you have that. Now you also have another one, the next page. This is a lower level. You're going to find out later that this is actually a daylight basement. It is not a full basement. This CS right here is a crawl space. So this is, this is kind of matching that main floor plan minus the garage. This area will not be utilized. We're going to do a crawl space. The stairs are a good place because they line up on both floors. So that's a good place to kind of organize how things are going. We're going to do the back area. We're just going to make it all mechanical. So this is where electrical, plumbing, storage, all of that is going to go into. We're going to put a bathroom over here against this wall. Now there's a reason for this. Notice that the mechanical room and this bathroom, are they kind of common to anything on the upper floor? The guest bathroom upstairs. The kitchen, the master bathroom. All of those require what? Plumbing. Plumbing, <coughs> Plumbing and power. different types of power. The washer and dryer is right there. Because everything's 120 through a house except for two devices or three devices generally. Your furnace, your range, and your dryer. Okay, everything else is 120. But we want to, that's expensive wires to run because now you're going hot gauge or something and they're going to cost you quite a bit of money if you stick those somewhere else. Now, do you, do, you, do you always lump those together? No, not always. Client demands it be somewhere else. Hey, it's got a cost, do it. Maybe you just got to understand it has those costs. We're going to have an open area here, downstairs, and we're going to put two bedrooms along here. Now, these will be maybe partially underground. Okay. This is the only window. We have to have egress out of every window. Emergency egress. You have to have two paths out. The door, which is obviously going to come off of here. I didn't show it. That's one path. Have to have another path. It's going to have to be a window. Okay. So we will have that to deal with. This bedroom, we're pretty good. We're going to be on the daylight side of the basement. We can just standard stuff. Okay. But we might be looking at window wells here. Okay. Okay. How big these are and stuff are kind of up to you. Here's the overall dimensions again. So we're going 48. That's the total length of the upstairs, right? Yeah. Okay. But we're chopping this down to 30. And we're making it the same width as the upside. What is the CS for? Crawl space. Crawl space. That will not be part of the basement. Can I ask a question? Yes. The 849 foot concrete wall, you know, that's for the basement. Third with two by fours, so then you add concrete to that. I mean, what, 
the size of the walls down here different than the two that I Yes, these walls will be different, okay, but for now it's not really important to you. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right, after that, you have just some sketches. So here's the front. Now the front, okay, I'm gonna try and show both these at once. So this is the main floor bubble diagram. Here's the main entrance. Okay. North is kind of looking that way. So this is your front elevation. And then you're going to look at it from the left and right also. Okay. So to help you out with how this is going to look. Okay, so here's your front view. And keep in mind this is just the author's sketch. Certainly not to scale or anything. It's just a concept. So when you come up, we're going to come by the master. We're going to put, or at least they're kind of envisioning some windows in here, because that's the first room we hit as we come along this side of the house. Here we've got some steps that are going to pop up to that covered deck. That deck is tied around all the way around through this part of the house. Here I kind of see the living room. So in essence, that's kind of your look from here. You do see the slope of the land coming down. We've pretty much got to keep the land straight until we get into the house. Okay. And then we can slope it off to expose the lower level. The right elevation, this is really kind of the big view side. There's your window wall with a couple doors in it. Um, the lower level is kind of sketched in. Yes, Becca. What's the height of your ceilings? Or do you not know those yet? So they're listed on your bubble diagram, the height of the wall. Okay. Okay. Oh, gotcha. Don't start with your elevations yet. These are just kind of to give you some more spatial constraints and stuff to think about. But remember, the living and dining is all the, the stuff right behind this wall, right? And it's all open. What do these windows up here kind of tell you about what we're doing with the ceiling in there? Well, it's going to be. Yeah, we're going to have to do something to vault, right? And make all that so that all that sunlight comes in. And... Okay. Here's your garage. Is the garage? Yeah. So the last view. This is your left view. So here you see the entrance to the garage. This area right in here is your master bath area. Here's the master area. That's what you're seeing behind those walls. We've got two types of roofs that we're looking at here. That doesn't mean that's what we're going to stick with, but in essence, gable, gable, sheds. Yeah. All right, so that's your beginning information. When you go about doing this, I'm going to go to the main bubble diagram and go back to the computer. In essence, folks, start with big triangles. Don't worry about walls. They'll come on the second step. Start with triangles that chunk out rooms in the relationship. So in essence, what you're going to do, you've got a bubble diagram that's mostly circular in shape. We've got a house, which are almost always rectangular in shape, right? All our rooms, they're all have 90 degree corners, they're rectangles, right, for the most part? Okay. So start with rectangles. Then we'll start figuring this stuff out. After we get them kind of spaced, the rectangles, then we will start adding walls to it. Then you're going to figure out your access and how it works and where things go. So to start with this, I'm going to start it like I'm looking at the front of the house. So I'm just going to come in here and draw a rectangle. And I'm going to draw it at what size? Um, Remember, you're, what you're doing here is you're kind of roughing in the floor plan. Now, chapter 16 runs you through this. What is a floor plan? 
Does anybody know what a floor plan really is as far as the glass box is concerned? It's like a full section view of three Okay. Um, this is pretty much it. So it's like a full section. So we're taking the section, cut through the structure. You said three feet. Technically, the architectural standard is four feet. So we come off the floor, four feet, and we're going to take a saw. And we're going to cut this thing all the way around here, and we're throwing away the roof. Okay. That is where we're drawing this. So we're looking straight down. Always draw one to one. Okay. So that's what we're trying to represent here. Chapter 16 runs you through this very well. When we go to do the lower floor, what are we going to do? We're going to go to the lower floor, come four foot off the floor, take a saw, cut everything off, throw away everything above. So we're looking down on it. So in essence, I'm drawing my floor plan here. Now, you do not have to follow this, although this method is almost identical to the way the author talks about in chapter 18. So I'm going to do a rectangle here, and it is going to be at um, 48. Comma 32. And you gotta use feet, right? 48 feet, comma 32 feet. Are we doing the basement or the I'm doing the main floor. The main floor. Start with that. That's the main living quarters. Yes. The 48 feet is including the deck? Or it says no, no cover. It, does not. it is not including the deck. Nope. No deck. I'm not even going to worry about the deck until okay. I get my interior partition because the deck's going to go where the deck's going to go. Yeah. It's going to go right here. <laughs> hey, it's going to go right there. I'm not even going to worry about it. Okay. Okay. Uh, there will come a time where we worry about the deck. But right now, we're just chunking out spaces. Okay. So we're doing interior and exterior partitions to divide this space up to aid the occupants in their needs. Okay, right? That's what architects do. Make sure the structure satisfies the occupant's needs. All right, we got a garage that sits up here. Okay, so I'm going to put that rectangle on there. So I'll just do another rectangle right here, and it is at 24 feet. By 24? By 24 okay. feet which is a fairly small two-car garage, but it works. Is that solely used for cars? Okay, now we have a master suite and a master bath, master closet area. Next thing I do is try and figure out what that needs to be. What size do they recommend for a master bedroom? This would be where I go to chapter 10. They have a couple pages devoted to the master suite area. This should not be a 10 by 10 bedroom. Okay. That's what you give, give the children, okay. or a guest bedroom. This should be a fairly expansive space. You see that, Jess? Okay, they're saying 18 by 16 is a good size, right? That's pretty true. So I'm just going to start with another rectangle here, and I'm going to make it at 16 by 16. Okay. Um, if I could type, I would make it that size. At 16 feet, comma, 16 feet. Okay. So there's my master. Now it looks to me from the bubble diagram that we're then basically giving this portion, okay, 16 by 16 is kind of minimum for a master, okay. but it's a good place to start. This area is the master closet, master bath, and half bath, right? Look at the bubble diagram. Doesn't it kind of look like we're dividing that part of the house up for that? Yeah. Okay, so you've got to get those spaces in there. Now, is this area bigger than this area? What's going to be occupied the most? The bathroom. The bathroom. <laughs> people, want it. people want those nice bathrooms. Yeah, I... But how much time do you really spend in that darn thing? A percentage of your day. I mean, if you have a TV in there... 
<laughs> and that like so nice couch and a spotty. They use use your discretion here. They, I think uh, Jesse said Jesse said 16 by 18 uh, is actually the 40. size that she sees the in one? chapter 10. Not including your back, your next door wrap around it, so it's just. I move that 24 inches. The garage is separate too, so it's just so whatever it's living. Huh? It's not part of the 56. Oh, that's right. Yeah, because you, yeah, that's what I thought. Yeah. I feel like your rectangle is probably off. <laughs> because mine looks different than yours. Yours is elongated, his is. Um, I, I've, I've got mine 16 by 18. Keep in mind, this is going to move. No, like your whole box. The, the 56 by 48? Yeah. I'm 32 feet. Okay. That's the house. The entire thing counting the garage is 56. Oh. The, oh. Garage is, the garage is 24. That's why I made this one. This one, this is 24. That's 32. Both of them together are 56. Gotcha. I told you. How big did you stretch the bedroom? I'm going 16 by 18. All right, now, once you've got that chunked out, do I really want to spend any more time here? Because I know I've got three rooms in here. Hey, I'm not going to go to there. I'm going to start doing the others. What do we need? Just kind of move through the structure. What's the next thing we need here? A utility room, correct? Yeah. So what size do I need for a utility room? Keep in mind, this is about their main access coming out of the garage. It shows on the bubble diagram they want their washer and dryer in here. Again, it will not be a room that's used much. It's a work room. So there's a door so included in it, though. You don't have to worry about entertainment and things like that. But you do need to work about, think about the utilitarian aspects of it. But it'll be like a 13 by 18? No. So I'm just going to come in here and I'm just going to Like a half. five foot walkway. And I'm going to start at, let's see, I need 30 inches for a washer and dryer. That's two and a half feet. And I need a walkway. That's three feet. Pretty mm -hmm. good door in it, three foot. That's around five, six feet. So I'm going to go a couple feet over this. So I'm going to do this at eight feet wide. And let's see, I don't want 32 minus 18. Eh, let's just kind of throw it here. I'm not going to worry about the distance. Add 8 feet. Comma, he made the master suite 16 by 16, but that's yes. just to your discretion. However big you think okay. you should make it. Remember, i got to have a hallway in here, too, that access the stuff. So that's going to be my utility room. From there, we then have, this is open for the kitchen and dining. <coughs> that needs to kind of line up with what's going on here. We do have a staircase that's coming in here. For now, it's going to be a while till we know how the stairs really work. But for your stairs, if right now you make a rectangle, <coughs> and let me just go ahead and draw it. I'm going to put it at 42. Minus 16. This is going to be my staircase. And what I've got this at is 3 foot 6 inches wide, and I made it 16 feet long. Okay. Now, this is going to be unusable area. We will actually be able to use some of this area, but we don't know how much. <coughs> Until we go and design the stairs, we won't know how this is going to work. Okay. So just chunk out this much room for your stairs. Remember, you can go down to three feet. We could do an L shape where it goes different directions, but for now, just plan on this. Okay. It's going to be unusable space, but that's how we're going to access the two floors. Now, what I'm going to do is I think I'm going to just set this off because I know I need to have a 36 inch minimum. I'm going to make this hallway 3.6 inches also. Okay. 
So I had a nice hallway coming in there. And that will kind of tell me where the back of those stairs are going to go. Feel free to explode your rectangles so you can use the offset command. Now when I do that, notice, hey, look, I don't even hit that. Uh, i got to have access to this master, so something's going to change there, but it doesn't really matter. We'll do that at a later date. So there's we're going to be my staircase for now. So I might bring my hallway down like such. Now this area is kind of open because it's a living room, dining room, kitchen. Make sure you're checking how much room do we need for a kitchen? How much room do we need for a dining room? Your client put a U-shaped kitchen in there. But if I measure the distance from here to here, I'm left with 24 feet. Is that enough room to put a kitchen and a dining room here? Depends. Yeah, I can fit it in there. Is it the greatest situation? Don't know. How much room do you have this way? I've got 32 feet. Okay. So that's for my living dining. Well, what do they recommend for a living room? That basically means I've got 20 feet and 12. Can I do that? Make sure your spaces work. Once you get done with this, then what you want to probably do is go down and draw the basement size. You're given those sizes. Make sure you copy the stair from a common corner to the two of them. So you've got the stair. That has to match up on both floors. That's the only thing that has to match up.